Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to be talking about the animations element. And you'll notice that the animations element in the left side panel has two sides, zoom and pan and animations. So first, let's talk about zoom and pan. Now, what you'll notice is that there are going to be times when you might actually want to zoom in and have your viewer see something that might be too small for them to see just by watching the video. And you can actually do that by doing zoom and pan. And I'll show you what that means. Now, when you do zoom and pan, what you'll want to do is you'll want to take this square by the handles and you'll want to move it to the place that you actually want to zoom in on. What you'll notice that is happening in the timeline is that there will be an arrow and that is your zoom and pan arrow and it's an indication that you have placed an element on the timeline where you were zooming and panning. And what's happening on the screen is that we have zoomed in on this one area as you can see. Now just like any other element, we can actually control that element by clicking on the element and by using the properties area. So what could happen is that your video would progress and then you'd want to go back to the regular size. You'd want to have your video show the entire screen. You can do that by going to scale to fit just by clicking this button. And you'll notice then that your screen will show the full size. And this can be a handy tool when you have to record a part of the video that will be too small for your viewers to see. And what you'll notice is that we have two arrows on the timeline. Both arrows indicate zoom and pan. One indicates that we zoomed in, the other one indicates that we zoomed out. Now you can also use the animations feature and there are 10 to speak of and we'll briefly go through each one of them. Now to do that, we're going to advance the video slightly by moving the cursor. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull each one onto the timeline so that you can see what actually happens. So in the custom area, we can pull our zoom and pan here. And what happens is we can actually customize what actually happens and we control that inside of the properties area. If we don't want the animation, we click it and click delete. We can actually use the restore. And you'll notice what happens is it actually restores the screen to where it was. So in other words, it looks backwards. It skips the last animation and it brings the screen back to where it was for this animation. And you can see that here. Once again, we can control this in the properties area. So now we're going to click delete. We can bring in an animation that has no opacity, right, or no see-through nature. Or we can bring in one that has full opacity. We can bring in the element that says tilt to the left. And as you'll notice, our screen tilts to the left. We can control how much in the properties area. And we can, we can do the same thing tilting to the right. We can actually have a, an animation that will scale up. And then one that will scale down. And 
Well, the last animation that we'll be talking about can be done on any point in the timeline or any section of the timeline. So we could choose a section of the timeline and we could place here. And what we want to do is we want to use the smart focus. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drag the smart focus into one area. And what you're going to notice is that Camtasia Studio will tell us that to apply smart focus animations, the editing dimensions need to be smaller than the media that we're using. So right now we're using full screen, we're using full size. So as long as the dimensions are smaller, we will be able to use zoom and pan, which it will be. And so we can choose our settings to make sure it is smaller. We can use fit to visible or we can customize it. We can customize it for any device. So in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to customize it for 480p and click apply. Since you'll be using this feature often, we'll be taking a closer look at the smart focus element all by itself in a future video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.